Welcome to this episode of Learn Everyday English, your roadway to English proficiency. I'm back in the studio, but sitting in my comfy, as we say, or comfortable, uh, recliner chair. And I have a special video for you today uh, that you're going to find very interesting. Before I get into that, you know, there are three things you can do for me. Hey, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and three, tell your friends about it so that they can benefit from the videos and this channel too, just like you. Well, today we got a, a different type of video. I'm gonna be doing an interview with a, a friend of mine. His name is uh, Victor Miranda, and he lives in Mexico, and he's actually my italki, uh, Spanish teacher. I've been knowing him for a, a while now, and we meet about once or twice a week and he helps me with my Spanish and he speaks English very well so um, I thought uh, I could do an interview with him and he can tell how he learned English and maybe impart some knowledge we say in English or give some knowledge uh, to you all to help you as you uh, are on your English uh, language journey so without further ado I'm going to jump into the video with Victor. We recorded it on Zoom, so it'll be a split screen type of conversation. So, without further ado, here's a video with Victor. Well, hello. Uh, we got a special uh, treat for you today. I have a uh, special guest in the, uh, not in the studio, but joining me from a different country. Uh, Victor Miranda, and he's my uh, actually my English teacher on italki, and I've known him for quite a while, I guess going on close to a year, I think, maybe, or eight, ten months, and uh, actually it's an interesting story. Um, my wife and I went down to Mexico in July for a vacation and, and met with Victor in person for the first time, and he was uh, gracious enough to be our tour guide, and he showed us all around the city. We were there for about two weeks in Mexico, most of that time in uh, Mexico City, and it just made the uh, trip a whole lot uh, more enjoyable and memorable, so he could add a lot of history and culture to our trip, so we really appreciate that. So, uh, Victor, in the I keep wanting to say in the studio, but it's not really in the studio, but in the Zoom studio, I can say, so... Hello, Victor. How are you doing? Hi, I'm fine. I just want to say that I'm your Spanish teacher, not your English mm -hmm. teacher. Oh, okay. Good point. <laughs> yeah, well, I think yeah. your English is pretty good, too. So, uh, I hope so. Okay. And well, now that you said that, those of you that uh, may want to study Spanish, uh, you know, look up Victor on italki. So it's Victor Miranda. See? Yeah. Probably I will send you my link. Okay. Okay, Victor. Um, well, tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, where do you live and what do you do? I think you have an interesting background. Yeah, well, I studied philosophy and I specialize in philosophy from indigenous people in Mexico and in Latin America. And also now I'm a Spanish teacher on Aitoki. Um well, I don't know what else to say. Okay. Well, I'll say add something to that. That was one of the things that kind of interested me about Victor, his profile, where he had a background in uh, philosophy and indigenous cultures and indigenous people, people groups. And, and, you know, we started talking and he shared a lot of information with me about that. And then my wife, who's Mexican-American, really likes to uh, know about that type of thing. And she actually joined us quite a few sessions on italki and he uh, you know, told us all about uh, different things. It was very interesting. So well, this is a, a podcast or a video channel on YouTube about learning English. So Victor, uh, kind of 
tell us when did you start learning English and how did you start learning English? Because your English is is very good. And... Well, I started at school. I I was a child, um, but I didn't really want to learn English. It's more that I had to learn English. Uh, but then I was a bad student. Um, I'm just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> and I had to go to a, a language school. And mm -hmm. there I really started learning English. And it was really nice because when I was at school, it, it was really difficult to learn English with like the method that they had. And when I was in this school, it was more like natural and I learned English like in three months. Uh, well, like the basics and it was more than all the things I, I learned in probably um, three or four years before. So you were going to school, like public school, I guess in Mexico City, but then you would go to this other school after after school or after your other regular classes? Uh, well, it, it was like in the same period of time, uh, probably when I was 15 or 16. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I was just, as I said, a bad student and I, I need to catch up with my lessons in in my school so in high school and mm -hmm. the the best way to do that was going to a different school yeah okay. On, only to learn english okay that's very interesting okay i didn't know that well yeah because i i can speak from experience i i studied spanish in high school for four years and didn't learn a thing because after I graduated, I couldn't speak or understand very well at all. So uh, I know how it is having the wrong type of uh, teaching can really uh, be detrimental or if it's not interesting, you're not gonna learn. So thanks for sharing that. Well, next question I have for you, uh, why did you want to learn English or why do you wanna learn English and continue to learn English? Was there a burning desire maybe to go to yeah, the United States or England, Australia, or maybe there was a cute girl in the class who spoke English. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I was, uh, um, I, I have to pass my English course. So that was the main reason why oh. I started learning English. But, but once I start learning in the correct way, correct way for me, um, it was really fun and I just wanted to keep learning about uh, different cultures uh, because that's the thing, learning a new language, it's also learning a new culture. And right. that was something really important for me. And I noticed that I was able to uh, understand better uh, the American culture or uh, other cultures just by trying to understand in their own language instead of trying to express everything in my native language. Well, yeah, brings a question for one, I guess you, did, you had to pass an English exam to graduate from high school. Is that a requirement? And not, but um, I have to pass the course uh, and need a grade. Oh, okay. It was just uh, every year uh, okay. grade. Uh, All right. Yeah. And one of the questions I had, I guess you said the new class or school, they taught English in a different way. What, what made it different from how you learned in, at first and what did they do differently that made it more interesting? Well, when I was learning English in, at school, my um, high school, uh, they were teaching English, just explaining me the rules in Spanish. And I had to repeat everything and memorize everything. But in the new school, 
I was able to listen to English uh, all the time and I have to figure out uh, what was the vocabulary instead of just showing me something and telling me the name, like this is a cup. Um, well, and I, I have like this different way that I have to find out what was the vocabulary and just try to understand what the teacher was saying, more like okay. in a natural way. Okay. And was the teacher um, like an English speaking, a native English speaker? And were you able to like speak in English with a lot of your classmates to, to make it kind of more fun and yeah um well i had to change teacher like every month oh, and i okay. have uh, one teacher uh, monday wednesday and friday and another mm -hmm. teacher on um, tuesday and thursday so mm -hmm. it was uh, really different uh, but all my teachers i think the first years all my teachers were from Mexico, okay. so none of them were native English speakers. Okay. Well, that's that proves the point. I guess you don't need to have native English uh, or native uh, teachers that are teaching you in whatever language you're learning to be native speakers necessarily to be able to learn that language. Okay. Well, next question I have here: What do you think, or what are some of the benefits for you? Uh, have been in, in learning English, would you say? Well, I think my world was all in Spanish. Mm -hmm. uh, when I learned English, my, my world just was bigger and bigger because I learned um, music, movies. Um, mm -hmm. Well, uh, probably in the whole world, we can watch movies from the US, but uh, I was able to understand. And that was for me the best thing that I discovered that I can understand another language. Um, uh, for me, that was something really great. Okay. Yeah, I have to agree with you there. Like, you know, learning another language just opens up, I like to say, a door to a yeah. whole new world and for me spanish like there's so many spanish speaking countries and i can watch now news in spanish and you can learn stuff that you would never hear or or learn in your say here in the u.s there's not a lot of news say what's going on in colombia or even mexico or if you do hear something from mexico it may be a little bit slanted we say or skewed and you may not get the real information so it, it's i think it's cool you know okay well, what do you think are the most difficult things about learning English? Um, you know, a lot of people tell me, especially maybe Spanish speaking people, it's the pronunciation. You know, but yeah. I mean, your, your experience, what have been some of the most or more difficult things in learning English? Uh, uh, well, I think the same, the pronunciation. It's really hard because Spanish is a phonetic language. So mm -hmm. you can read all the words and once you know how to pronounce that word or how to pronounce every sound you know what you're reading but with english is really different mm -hmm. you can watch a word and you don't know how to pronounce that word mm -hmm. really hard but uh, it happened other um uh, words more like phrasal verbs that mm -hmm. you yeah. have to know many different meanings for it, but it seems the same word but mm -hmm. it right. changed yeah. yeah okay well, what do you think is the best uh, for you how have you been able to handle or deal with the pronunciation aspect it's just just practice 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 listen and try to repeat and model what you hear or? well i try to repeat but I think I'm having a really hard time all the time with pronunciation. Um, um, well, I think I keep um, making mistakes all the time. Um, but it's the thing, yeah. 
once you are learning a new language, you have to be aware that you are going to make a lot of mistakes and just mm -hmm. keep trying and trying and trying. Mm -hmm. um, probably, well, uh, once I talk to someone for the first time uh, in English and I noticed that they could understand me, <laughs> yeah. uh, that was for me. Oh, so right, yeah. I'm pronouncing uh, uh, well enough. Right, right. Okay. I think that's a good point, though. You make that you're always going to make mistakes. And too, that's how we learn, I think, by making mistakes. And you, especially as we're older, like I know myself, I'm never going to be able to speak Spanish without an accent. I'm sure I still sound like a gringo, but as long as the pre people can understand me, that's the most important thing for me, I guess. Okay. Um, this may touch upon some of the same um, items, but what do you like and don't like about learning English? Is there anything you don't like? Uh, or is it just something you like to do, love to do, and no negatives? Um, well, now I, I don't have negative points, but probably um, the thing is um, in Mexico, we have to learn English and you don't have any other option. Uh, so that's why I think many students don't like uh, studying English. But uh, again, I think once you start learning a new language and learn uh, more about the culture, and uh, you really want to keep learning. Mm -hmm. OK, good answer. Um, well, too, and what what has been? I don't know if you're you're continuing to say study English, quote unquote, right now, but because you, you're at that level, maybe. Uh, but when you were really trying to learn it, what were some of the methods that that you would do? Like, would you read, like, say, read and watch videos, listen to podcasts, study grammar, or what's kind of your game plan that you used to do? in trying to learn English or met methodology maybe or? Yeah, um, probably just at the beginning, it was just learn grammar and practice with that grammar all the time. So never just focus on the structure, but also how to use that structure. And uh, that was um, at the beginning. Then it was like more natural. I like listen to music and watch movies. And uh, uh, at the beginning, I was reading the subtitles in English, but then someone told me, if you are talking to someone in the real life, you don't yeah. have subtitles. Yeah. So I just, uh, uh, try to uh, watch movies without subtitles, listen to podcasts. And even if I couldn't understand at the beginning, um, with more time and patience, probably it's the key. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. it, it was like more natural, natural. And uh, also I like to read. So um, I read, for example, the whole series of Harry Potter oh, wow. and in Spanish. So mm -hmm. uh, because I knew the story, I read the story, all the books in English. So okay. it, I think that was really good for me. And also to practice to talk to people from um, different countries. Okay. And would you study English like every day or try to do something a little bit every day? I think I use English almost every day, but okay. it's not because I'm trying to study English. It's just mm -hmm. like it's part of my daily life. Okay. I think that's a good point. Yeah, you have to make it part of your daily routine, daily life. And then you said you were speaking English. How did you find or meet people to speak English with what were some of the man methods that you found people to talk to? Well, I live in Mexico City, so 
here in Mexico City, we have many people from different countries. So I met a, a woman from the UK and that was the first time that I uh, speak like constantly. And I think I improved a lot when I was talking to her. But then um, probably I just talked to myself like, um, when I was uh, walking, instead of thinking in Spanish, I was thinking in English all the time. Um, just for, for myself, because um, it wasn't that easy to find someone, and I wasn't using uh, internet to learn English. Right, okay. I think today it's they make it pretty easy maybe to find conversation partners, because there's like italki or conversation exchange maybe there's some meetup groups in your area so maybe you can always find people like you said it's a good suggestion talk to yourself i do that sometimes too or maybe uh record a video of yourself talking about something and you can play it back and realize how many mistakes you made <laughs> yeah. or I, ma I make i've done that so some tips okay but that, that's good um, so what tips, suggestions can you give uh, somebody who wants to learn English to, what can they do to be successful or to be more successful? And maybe well, tips and what things not to do or not to focus on so much when they're trying to learn English. Well, for me, it's difficult to give a good advice for what to do, but probably it's better uh, never try to translate anything because if you are learning a new language it's more like you have to try to understand that in that language not in your own language because sometimes um, when you read something and it's in english and you are just thinking in spanish it gets more difficult because it's not the same language so you are going to have something that it's not like the same and it's just confused, conf confusing. So okay. probably the best thing is just to try to learn uh, in like in this natural way. So, uh, and the other thing is to be patient. So, um, because I, I have seen um, some courses that they tell you you can speak English in one year yeah. but uh, I think that's too much you need to be patient and uh, be aware that learning a language it's like a whole process mm -hmm. and you cannot be uh, really fast yeah well, that's a really good point. Yeah, because I've seen these two where, hey, learn Spanish in three months. And you're like, hey, what's wrong with me? Because I can't do that, you know. But to me, I think it's just have fun with it, you know, find things you like to do in your own life, in your own language, and find those, say, in English, if you're trying to learn English and just make it enjoyable, you know. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Uh, if you are trying to learn English, reading something that you don't like it's really <laughs> yeah. uh, impossible because mm -hmm. you are not interested in that right. thing um, it's always have to be something that it's really deep in in, okay. in your daily life okay well maybe i got a, just a couple more questions for you um have you had to use your um your english much in the past and like have you had a any instances where it really was a good benefit, you knowing how to speak English uh, helped you out or in certain situations or? Yeah, well, um, uh, as I said, I studied philosophy. So when I was in this level, you need to read sometimes many articles in English and that's something that it's really important just to be able to read in another language. But also when you are working um, just in like in tourist areas 
sometimes people ask you questions and they don't speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. And it's really nice to be able to answer all those questions in English. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I think it's the, just a few situations like I have to speak English. Okay. And maybe my last question for you is, um, or do you have any like goals to to keep improving your English or do you have a, like a vision or what are your ultimate goal in learning and just keep improving, bettering your ability to speak English or you think where you're at now is fine, where you want to be and you're happy with that or? Well, sometimes I find myself in situations that I don't understand something mm -hmm. and well, I would like to find the moment in my learning process that I don't have to be worried about what they are saying. Yeah. I want to be able to understand everything. But also, as I said, I like to read. I want to be able to read a whole novel without a dictionary. Yeah. Okay, well, that's a good point. And I guess that says you know we we can we never stop learning especially well, even in our say mother tongue but especially in another language is always something more to learn more to improve and this to me it's just a journey so like you said don't be in a rush in a hurry you know it's a lifelong yeah. pursuit as we say and like i said just have fun with it so i think that's all the questions i had did you have anything else you wanted to add or no just thank you very much for having me and I'm still learning English. I think I'm not in the level that I want to be. So I just need to keep practicing and studying everything. Okay. Well, Victor, thanks a lot for joining me today. And I know this will be beneficial for the uh, viewers, you know, the channel and you too can, uh, you know, get to the level Victor's at just, you know, take your time and Put into practice some of these key thoughts that uh, he um, imparted today to us on the channel. So again, Victor, thanks a lot for joining me. Thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed that uh, interview I had with Victor. Hey, what do you think? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Did you learn something new? Maybe some tips, ideas, techniques that will help you as you uh, learn English yourself? And I was very impressed with Victor and his English. And we were able to just have a natural, say, free-flowing conversation in English. We didn't have to actually stop the video and, and record anything over again. So that's what you see was uh, just the way that we recorded it. So he did an excellent job. So thank you, Victor. So if you like the video, remember, like it, subscribe to the channel, and three, tell your friends about it. I think that that'll be it for now. I have a good day, uh, rest of the week, wherever you are in this world. And thank you for watching this episode of Learn Everyday English. Hey, we'll see you later. Goodbye.